Okay, there's an announcement for the physics education department students, so they should come and see me uh, during the break. Is there anybody from the physics education department? Okay, okay. Now, this is the histogram of your first pre-report, the similarities in your pre-report. Well, they are generally, in general, good, meaning that the similarity, there is no similarity with the internet resources for most of them. Well, some of them, well, there is one at 81% similarity. And, well, just a few. So these ones, if this was an actual pre-report, I will just treat as if you haven't given any pre-report before. And, well, all of you who have tried to upload, there were a few problems, but I think we have resolved it. So now you have a new pre-report for chapter four, which is due this Sunday. And the hour should be, I think it was 11 this time, not noon. Well, when it is noon, it's, it just gets confusing whether it is at midnight or at midday. So this is before midday at 11 o'clock this Sunday. Okay, before, if you remember, the, on Tuesday we had started discussing the vectors. We had the vectors, we multiplied vectors with numbers, we added vectors and subtracted vectors, mainly geometrically. Now we will continue with vectors, but do you have any questions before we go on with vectors? Anything you want repeated? Okay, we had said that the vectors are just quantities that have both direction and uh, magnitude. So we said that, okay, something is in that direction at five meters. But this is mathematically, this is not so convenient to work with such expressions. I mean, how do you express this mathematically? So what we do is we write vectors in terms of their components. Now, what we mean by components is that well, we have been always saying that we first have to choose some reference point. Let's say this is our reference point, and we will describe the position of every object with respect to this reference point over here. Now, if, if it was just one-dimensional motion, we said just uh, giving a number, a positive or a negative number, relative to this point was enough. So that would uniquely specify the position. Now we are in two dimension on the screen. In real life, we are in three dimensions. To specify, to use, to show the vectors, we have to use the vectors. And one of the easy ways to write the vectors in a mathematical form is to use the components. But still, we have to choose some directions, some independent directions, let's say. They are again arbitrary. So you can say that, OK, just tell me one direction. This one. No, one, OK. Okay, this is one direction. Another direction. Some other direction. Why, right? I mean, why don't you invent something more fancy? Hmm? Well, let's, let's stick with the two dimensions. I mean, I'm on this plane. I mean, it gets confusing. Um, the other direction can be as well this one. It's fine. I mean, you can choose your directions like this. There's no problem with that. The problem is choosing, well, there's no problem, but there is one single problem. The problem is that expressions start to get kind of complicated. Now, to simplify the manipulation, you will see why it becomes simpler. What we usually do is we choose these directions to be orthogonal to each other. So these two are not orthogonal to each other. So let me erase this one and choose this direction. So these are the two orthogonal directions. Orthogonal meaning that there is 90 degrees between the two. It just simplifies certain calculations. You don't have to choose them 90 degrees. You can choose them 45 degrees or any angle in between the two. Expressions get a bit more complicated, but it's still valid as far as you know what you, do, what you are doing. OK, so let's say this is our 
Let's just give them names. The conventional names are usually x, y, and z. Let me just call these two directions x direction and the y direction. And now we have the, an object sitting over there. Okay, we show that uh, the position of that object by a vector. We said that the vector is, we just show it by an arrow graphically. It is an arrow pointing in the direction of my object and the length of my object, the length of the arrow will be the distance of my object from my reference point. So let's say this is R. Okay, this is the position vector, but we will be using vectors for arbitrary things. So like for velocity, we will be using vectors. For acceleration, we will be using vectors. So let's just keep it a bit more general here. Rather than saying that it is the position vector, let's just call this some vector A. This is my vector A. I have chosen these two axes. Now, the next thing I do is I just draw lines parallel to x and y that passes through the end of this vector A. So this is one, act. This is one such line. This is another such line. Since these two axes are perpendicular to each other, these lines that go through the end point of A and they are parallel to the axis, they are also perpendicular to the other axis. So this is 90 degrees, this is also 90 degrees. Now you see, in the direction of X, it is just a one-dimensional system. So we can talk about the position of this point in, the dire in this dimension only. So there is this point, this point is in this dimension. So what is the position? Well, the position is mainly this distance, let's say plus this distance, if it is in the positive x direction side, or it is minus this distance if it was on the other side. So the position of this point over here on this one dimension, we just call it A of x. And the position of this one, this point, in this one dimension, it's again, if you just restrict yourself to this one dimension, you can just treat it as a one dimensional problem. So this point has a position relative to this reference point on that dimension. It is positive it, if it is in, on the positive y sense, it will be negative if it is on this half of the reference, on this side of the reference point. So the position of that point is, we just call it AY. These x and y, we just put them to uh, remind us the, that this is along the x-axis, this is along the y-axis. Now this ax and ay, they tell us the, they are called the components of this vector a. Now once we have these points, let us just imagine two different vectors. I can imagine this vector in the x direction from the reference point to here, and then this other point along the other side of this right triangle. Now my, let, let us just give them names also. Let's call this a x vector and this one a y vector. Now this a vector, we know how to add vectors. So this a vector, I can just write as the sum of ax vector plus ay vector. Now this is not generally used, so we will just make one more definition. Let's call x hat vector. This is what I will be using in your book. It is i hat. Okay, this is x hat or y i, I hat. Now this is not n. This thing over here, if you just enlarge it, it is just the x with a hat on top. But I have a bad handwriting, so quite often this just this would become x 
n. Well, this is x hat, not x to the power n. Okay, just keep that in mind. This symbol is this one and this one. So this is a unit vector in the direction of x. So we, we always say that, okay, to define a vector, we have to specify its direction and its magnitude. Now this already defined the direction. It starts from this reference point and it points in the direction of positive x. So in this case, it is in that direction. And its length is one unit. It's just one. Its magnitude is one. This is a vector with unit magnitude and it points in the direction of positive x. So we know its direction, we know its magnitude, we know this vector. Now why did we define this one? Well, mainly so that we can write a of x vector is equal to a x in the x hat direction. So how do we know that? Well, this is the a x vector. It starts from here and here. It is magnitude is equal to a x, and it is pointing in the x hat direction. So this keeps this has the magnitude information of our vector, and this has the direction information of our vector. Now, with this definition, we can also do the same thing for y hat, for the y direction. So the a vector we can write as a x in the x hat direction plus a y in the y hat direction. This is called a vector in terms of its components. Quite often you will have to write the, find the components of vectors and when you are asked to write a vector A in terms of its components, this is what you are asked for. Now if you, if you go back to our, this figure, now this x hat vector and y hat vector, if you want to show it on this graph, this is the x hat vector. It's not visible. That is the x hat vector. It is pointing in this direction. Its magnitude is 1. And this is the y hat vector, this one. This is our y hat vector. So if you know these numbers, ax and a y, you actually know your vector. Here, x hat is nothing but a vector. We already have discussed how we multiply it by a number. So this is a vector. We discussed how we can obtain it. Y hat is a vector. We multiply it by a number. We should be able to understand what this stands for. And this is a vector. This is a vector. We sum them up. We obtain our vector a. Now, how do we find these ax and ay, etc.? So if you call this angle the theta angle, you see here we have a right triangle because this was 90 because we had chosen the angle between our axis to be 90 degrees. So since this is 90 degrees, this is a right triangle and AX we can just write uh, AX is just the length of my vector A times cosine theta and a y is a times sine theta. Now, how do you calculate a? Well, a you should already. Um, if you are given the vector, you should know its magnitude. This is a, and its direction. Its direction is given by theta. So a and theta you should already know. Or you might be given a x and a y. Using these two values, you can calculate the magnitude of a. If you just take the square of the first one, 
ax squared plus ay squared. This will be just a squared in both of them. And then cosine squared plus sine squared, which is just one. So if you, have, if you know the components, you can obtain the magnitude of the vector, which is a. And about the theta, if you divide a y by a x, a y by a x just gives you tangent theta. So basically, if you know the direction of your vector, the magnitude of the vector, using those two information, you can calculate ax and ay. And if you know ax and ay using that information, you can calculate the magnitude of your vector and the direction of your vector. Any questions on these components? Because we will be mainly using the components of vectors. Okay, now let's go back to what we had done before. We had multiplied vectors by numbers, and we have added the vectors. Now, how can we do that in terms of the components of vectors? This is x and y. Let's say this is our vector a. And we would multiply that vector by a number. Let's just assume larger than one, just for demonstration. And then we obtain this vector, small a times the vector a, or let me. Okay, one more Greek letter. And the capital form is this one. Okay, at least in this, from this sketch, I already know that this lambda is larger than one because lambda a vector is larger than the a vector, the magnitude. And they are both pointing in the same direction and hence I know that lambda is positive. Now, if we know the components of the vector a, well, that would basically mean that I, I just draw parallel lines to the axis from the tip of the a, so I know the positions of these intersection points, ax and ay. What I want to find is if I do the components of this lambda a vector. So I do the same thing. This is lambda a, this is a new vector. It is the x component of that lambda a vector. And this, the position of this point is the y component of this lambda a vector. Well, there are a few things you can do. Let's just call this angle theta. Now, lambda a, the x component of the lambda a vector, is nothing but its magnitude times cosine of theta, which is nothing but lambda times the magnitude of a cosine theta, because we had defined this lambda a vector as a vector whose magnitude is lambda times the magnitude of the a vector. So this is what I use. It's lambda times the magnitude of a vector is the magnitude of this lambda a vector. But a cosine theta, the magnitude of the a vector times cosine theta is nothing but ax. So this is equal to lambda times ax. This is the x component of the lambda a vector. Well, you can do the same thing for the y component. This will be the magnitude of the lambda a vector times sine of theta, lambda a sine of theta, which is lambda a y. 
Well, what this basically proves is that multiplying vectors by numbers is more or less the same thing as multiplying numbers in the sense that lambda a vector is nothing but lambda a x in the x direction plus lambda a y in the y direction. This is what we have proved. This is lambda times a vector is nothing but a x in the x direction plus a y in the y direction. Uh, the, in the case of ordinary numbers, this is called nothing but the distribution of multiplication over addition. So you can distribute this multiplication by lambda over this sum over here, which basically means that you can multiply this lambda with each one of the terms in this sum, and the equality will still hold. Any questions on this one? This one. Okay. Well, in a sense, this is just a symbol. <coughs> this lambda a vector a with arrow on the top. It's just a symbol. Now we we have to first define what that symbol is. Now we said that that symbol corresponds to a vector. And hence, that symbol has the x component and the y component. So this is what I am showing here. I have this symbol, which is a vector. It has the x component and it has the y component. But we had just shown that, as you said, I can just ignore these parentheses. This is nothing but lambda times a x. But I had just proven to it over here. Without this proof, I cannot do this. I don't know that. Okay. And it doesn't always work, by the way. Not in all representations, for example. The point is you have to somehow find a way to show the vectors mathematically. This is just one way of showing the vectors. This showing the x and the y components is called the Cartesian coordinates. But I can as well have told you that, OK, this vector A, let's say circular coordinates, Now, in circular coordinates, the vector A would be just its magnitude and the angle theta. These are the circular coordinates of my vector A. Now, in circular coordinates, if I multiply this vector by A, what I obtain is, again, another vector whose magnitude is lambda times the magnitude of the original vector, but the direction is the same, assuming lambda is positive. Now, these a and theta are the components of this vector a in circular coordinates. When I multiply it by lambda, I only multiply one of them. I don't multiply the other one. This is why I was kind of being overcautious here by writing this lambda a vector in parentheses, the x component. Now let's do the addition. We will take two vectors, the a and b. How would you like to add that? Do you remember how we add them geometrically? Head to tail. So we just take this vector b without changing its direction we just move it to the head of the A. And the line connecting their common endpoint to the head of B, it just gives me, let's call it this vector C. C is nothing but A plus B. Now let's look at the components. <coughs> 
I can write the components of A. These will be the components of C. This is AX. This is AY. This is BX. This is BY. Now you see, this vector and this vector, they are parallel. So if you just look at these two, let's say, rectangles, this rectangle over here, and this rectangle over here, they are, these two rectangles are identical. This diagonal is identical. They're, they're, all the angles are identical. They are identical. They have the same sizes. By the way, this is CX, this is CY. Now, since they are identical, this side, which is bx, is equal to this side. So this part should also be bx. So this just tells me that this side over here is ax, this side is bx, that is just cx. cx is equal to ax plus bx. But you can do the same thing for the height, this height. I have this one is by, this side over here is ay, so the sum is just CY. Now this is X. And again, just the summation of vectors just behaves like the summation of ordinary numbers. If you want to calculate A plus B, it's just AX, X hat plus a y y hat plus b x b x x hat plus b y y hat now x hat y hat they are just vectors they are just not numbers but this x hat vector and this x hat vector they are common so I can just factor them out combine these two terms so this is nothing but a x plus b x in the x direction plus a y plus b y in the y direction. So this is c x, this is c y. Subtraction works the same way, multiplication by numbers work the same way in terms of the components. Does the x have a hat of This one, yes. It's a vector. Okay, just to remember the notation that we will be using. This is our vector A. Without the arrow, it is the magnitude of vector A. With a hat on the top, this is a unit vector in the direction of A. So these are three completely different things. So whenever you are writing anything, just make sure that you refer to the correct one. Do you refer to the vector? Do you refer to the magnitude? Or do you refer to the direction of the vector? Now, any questions up to this point? To this uh, we use the notation with arrow as a point, but okay. is it uh, corresponding uh, vector? This one. Uh, lambda, uh, vector A, uh, X. Now this one. This one. Now this, this notation is just I have a vector over here. I mean, you don't have to show vectors by a single symbol. What is your name? Arda. Arda. Okay, we, you can talk about the vector Arda. That's fine. But just not to confuse this with A times R times D times A, it would be, it, you would be advised to put some parentheses. So that's what I'm doing over here. Okay. 
Hmm? Sorry? Is it connected to the part of the parentheses? No, no, this is the vector R though. Hmm. So, so I, I just don't want the reader to get confused about this symbol. I have four letters over here. They are not the product of four letters. It's a single entity all by itself. The same thing over here. Lambda A vector is an entity on its own. So, uh, not corresponding F points. This one. Yeah. Now, this lambda a vector is itself a vector, this vector. So it points to a, it refers to a point. But here I'm talking about, I have that vector, I'm talking about the x component of that vector. And we had just proven that, in fact, this parenthesis over here, you don't have to need it. I mean, there are two ways you can interpret it. You can either think that it is lambda times a vector, it's a vector itself, you take the x component, or the a vector, you take the x component of it and multiply it by lambda. A priori, before this proof, those two things were different things. But we had just shown that they are identical, they are the same thing. So we don't have to be so cautious, we can just remove these parentheses over there. Other questions? So now comes the more confusing part about the vectors, manipulations of vectors. Vector products. Numbers, they're just, they're also called scalars, by the way. Scalars are numbers, they don't have direction. Now, numbers are just well, numbers, that's the only information they carry. But the vectors carry both the number information, it's their magnitude, and they also have that direction information. So they have, in a sense, a richer structure than just scalars. But that also allows us to define more than one way that we can multiply vectors. So we can, if we have two vectors, We can multiply them and get a number. This is a number. Or if you have two vectors, you can multiply them again by so-called vector product. This is how we will denote it. This is a vector. Now, vector product we will not need until the second half of the semester. So I would rather, I mean, if, if we discuss it now, you will be already long forgotten what the vector product is when we need it. So I will just skip the vector product. We will, uh, we will discuss it when we need it, but we will be discussing this scalar product first. Now, this is the definition of the scalar product. I say this is the vector A, this is the vector B. Assuming we know these two vectors, that means we know their magnitude and we know their direction. We multiply their magnitudes, and if we know their direction, we know the angle between the two. We multiply by the cosine of the angle between the two. This is how we define the scalar product. It just gives us a number. Now, of course, if you want, you can just choose this angle also as the angle between the two. This is also the same. This is also called the dot product. You can. This is the notation. 
shorter to write it in this form than in this form. Other questions? Now, if we are looking at a one-dimensional problem, in fact, this just reduces to the ordinary product in the sense that if A and B, they are pointing in the same direction, it is just the multiplication of the, uh, the two numbers corresponding to those two vectors. Now, why do we make such a weird combination? What was the point in defining such a thing? Let's look at an application of it. So this is our vector A. Now we had also defined these vectors x hat and y hat. Now AX, the x component of A, we had defined it as A, the magnitude of A, times cosine of theta, which I can also write as A times the magnitude of x hat times cosine theta because the magnitude of x hat is just one but you see I have magnitude of one vector magnitude of another, of another vector times cosine of the angle between the two this is nothing but the definition of our scalar product and if you repeat the same thing for a y this will be a cosine sine theta but sine theta is a cosine pi over 2 minus theta let me also add that 1 here I have the y hat now cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is sine of theta this angle is nothing but this angle over here between the a vector and the y axis. This is a in the y direction. So what this tells me is that if you want to calculate the component of a vector along any direction, in fact, the only thing you have to do is just take the scalar product of your vector with a unit vector in that direction. If you want to calculate the component of A in the x direction, you take the scalar product of your vector A in the direction of x with the unit vector in the direction of x. If you want to calculate the y component of your vector, you take the A vector, take the scalar product with a unit vector in the y direction. And in fact, if you want to calculate the component of A in some other arbitrary direction, you only have to do is take your vector A, calculate the scalar product, with a vector in, with a unit vector in that, whichever direction you want to study. So that's why we will be using this vector quite often. It allows us to calculate the component of a vector in a given direction. Now in the general case, let's say this is the vector A, this is the vector B. Now how do we calculate the component of vector A, let's say in the direction of B? We just, from the end of that vector, we draw a perpendicular line to the vector B. Let us just denote this distance by a parallel. Now A dot B, we had defined it as the product of their magnitudes times cosine of the angle between the two. You see, if you look at this right triangle over here, what I call this a parallel, that's the component parallel to B, this is nothing but the magnitude of A times cosine of theta. So the scalar product of two vectors is nothing but the magnitude of one of them times the component of the other one in that direction. So in this sense also, it kind of reduces your problem to, let's say, a one-dimensional problem. If you have this vector, you can treat it 
it has a component in this direction. That component is what I here denoted by a parallel. So this scalar product just gives me the product of the component of a vector in that direction and the magnitude of b in that direction. Now, how can we calculate this scalar product in terms of the components? That would be something more interesting. Let's say we have this vector a, ax in the x hat direction, ay in the y hat direction. We have the vector b, bx in the x hat direction plus by in the y hat direction. Now, before calculating a dot b in terms of these components, let's look at the scalar product of these unit vectors that we have. Let's say x hat dot x hat. What is the scalar product of x hat with itself? One x hat x squared one. Well, let's see. Okay, notationally, we also use use this notation. If you multiply any vector with itself, it's just the square of that vector. Now, how did we define the scalar product? We multiply the magnitudes. What is the magnitude of x hat? One. What's the angle between x hat and x hat? Cosine of zero. So it's the scalar product, the definition is one times one times one is one. Y hat times y hat, y hat squared. Again, one. The magnitudes are one. The angle between the two vectors is zero. So this is again one. X hat dot y hat. Well, the magnitudes are one, but the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So the product of all of them, this is zero. Now, again, this is an advantage of of the fact that we have chosen our x and the y directions at 90 degrees. If they were not 90 degrees, this wouldn't be zero. So a dot b, ax x hat plus a y y hat b x x hat plus b y y hat. Okay, it's just like ordinary multiplication. You can distribute it over. Uh, summation. I mean, if you have these, the sum of two terms multiply by the sum of the other two terms, you just multiply all terms one by one. So let's, let's see. I have this term times this term. A x times b x. x hat that x hat. We had just said that it is one. Plus a x times b y. A x times b y, I have x hat dot y hat. Again, it's zero. Plus a y times b x, y hat dot x hat. Now y hat dot x hat is again zero. They are 90 degrees with each other. So this is zero. Plus a y times b y times y hat times y hat it's just one so we have the a dot b is equal to if you know the components ax bx plus a y b y so if you know the magnitudes and their direction then you can just use the original definition, multiply the magnitudes, multiply by the angle, cosine of the angle between the two. If you know the components, just multiply the corresponding components together, x component with x component, y component with y component, and sum them up. And you would obtain the scalar product. Now let's do an application of this example. Let's say a vector is 3x hat plus y hat minus 2z hat. 
And the B vector is x hat minus y hat plus z hat. Now, how can you prove that they are orthogonal to each other? Now, we have these two vectors. Well, let's say this is our x direction, this is the y axis, this is the z axis. Now, this a vector would be pointing somewhere like this. The b vector would be pointing somewhere like this. Okay, so this is one vector, this, is, this would be the other vector. Now, I mean, it, it's kind of difficult to visualize even the vectors, but how can you prove that these two vectors are perpendicular to each other? <laughs> Let's give your friends a bit of a time to think for themselves. How can you prove that they are perpendicular? Well, you see, if you have these two vectors, if they are perpendicular, A dot P, which is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of P times cosine of the angle between the two would be pi over 2 or 90 degrees, this should be zero. This is something that we can easily check. If the scalar product is zero, that means the two vectors will be perpendicular to each other. So let's see, how do you calculate the scalar product? We know the components. We just multiply the corresponding components. The x component is three, the x component is y, one. If you multiply them, that is three. The x component is 1, the y component is minus 1. That is, if you multiply, it gives you minus 1. The x component is minus 2, the z, com the z component is minus 2, the z component is plus 1. If you multiply them, that gives you minus 2, so this is equal to 0. And hence, they are perpendicular to each other. Now, of course, if you just say, I mean, if this wasn't zero, you could have calculated the cosine of the angle between the two. You could have just said that, okay, this is equal to A times B times cosine theta. We know that the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B cannot be zero. So cosine of theta is zero, which tells me that theta should be pi over two. Now, in the general case, the cosine of theta would be just a dot b. If you know the components of vectors, for example, but you don't know how they are oriented, they, know they don't have to be orthogonal. This will just tell you what is the angle between the two, the cosine of the angle between the two. If you know the components, a dot b, you can just calculate by multiplying the corresponding components and summing them up. This is the magnitude. By the way, how do you calculate the magnitude using the scalar product? What is this for an arbitrary vector A? Square of the magnitude. So the magnitude of any vector is nothing but the square root of its square. This is the scalar product, that product square. Any questions? <coughs> now, this is mainly what we will be using the scalar product for, to denote the component of a given vector
in the direction of another vector. Now, just the announcement before you go, you can go for a break, but the physics education students, they should come and see me now. And I will not accept any physics-related questions now. <laughs>